Let's take a look at the synthesis in MorphWiz. What we tried to do is offer synthesis that really made sense to being controlled by our vertical grid. I'm a real believer that the vertical grid is a powerful way to make music, and I wanted to think about and present to all of you and to make a musical instrument for me that really kind of aligned the sound with the feeling of the control that you had. So right now in this sound, when I play at the bottom of the grid and move to the top, you get this nice harmonic sweep. Notice how when I get to the top though, the harmonics sweep up to basically the same note right there as where I started, in this case the A, and if I move across the screen and even lock the pitch, it's going to be exactly the note. If I go like to the halfway spot, it's going to stop there. So we spent a lot of time kind of like dialing that exactly in. So one of the kinds of synthesis in here is this uh, thing that we're calling wave sync. So when you open up the menu and you go to the synth page, which is down here, right over there, you can see that right now we're choosing this wave sync option and we've got it assigned to the vertical grid. You can also use the accelerometer on the iPad uh, to manipulate the point of the, the wave sync. Uh, and you could have a fixed value. Notice that when you hit a fixed value, they, uh, we give you the slider, which means that when you're using the vertical grid, it's not going to affect um, the, the harmonic sweep. Only the slider will, so... So now your slider is basically in charge of that. Vertical grid, your vertical is. And X tilt will be when you move the iPad around. So let's put it back to vertical grid for a second. I love this. Uh, this took a, bun a bit of time to just really nail down, but I think the results are great. So we were listening to a two octave sweep on the vertical grid. Let's check out a four octave sweep. I will close it so you can see the full range in the play screen. Uh, and we'll go here, start at the bottom, and then listen. One octave, two, three, there's your spot, and then all the way to the top. And now, one thing that's worth pointing out for those of you who are new to this whole concept, and I bet a lot of you are, is that every note is completely independent. So I might be down here on this note of the sweep, right? But then this note can be swept, and the other one is not affected, and I can play another one, like here. And everything, one goes up, the other one goes down, the other one stops. I can play up to 10 notes at the same time. Them all sweeping and doing what they do. So now let's go back to our synth page. And now we're going to take a look at FM. And to fully examine that, I'm going to come out and switch to this little sound that I made. This is a very kind of cool, bizarre sound. And notice down here, it's like kind of pure. Right? But as I move up, it goes nicely into this kind of sonic sci-fi world. Let's look at it. All right, here we are, and I'm in the synth page right down here, and in the middle uh, in the FM choice. Now, when FM comes up, you get this nice little slider here that says modulation frequency ratio. Oh my God, very, very technical. However, it's not such a big deal. You're basically just picking different points and think of it as like different amounts of, of FM modulation. And really, FM could be very complicated, but I refuse to get into that in anything that, that uh, we make. And you have two sliders that you deal with. Um, and the way you could think about it is if you want to create a really kind of whacked out sound, Turn this way up, right? And then this slider controls how much effect will be on the vertical grid. So even if this is really high up, if you have this way down uh, and you play, you're not going to get much effect. If you have this up, then the vertical grid will go from your pure to... So this is just the modulation frequency ratio is like the level, the, the density of your effect, and this one, the maximum depth, is how much effect will really be on your vertical grid. 
I use the sound a lot for playing like leads and just adding expression because I really love the idea of being able to add a little bit of that kind of uh, almost like harmonic distortion to a note. So if I'm playing a melody and then I can and a lot of these FM sounds are really dialed into the pitch. So if I play an A like here and I move up the vertical grid and I'm adding that FM, it will add FM but it still stays in pitch. Now my magic slider is also controlling that. So if I, I can move that around at the top to get more of an effect. Very expressive kind of a thing. So between having volume assigned to the vertical grid, which we'll look at, and FM assigned to the vertical grid as well, you can do a lot. Also, let's just take a, a look and complete this picture. You have this one. Oh, very complicated. Pure wave. Well, not so complicated at all. Uh, matter of fact, um, in the very near future, probably by the time you guys get this program, there'll be a little image here in this lovely uh, blank space that'll show you the waveform that's being heard. If you want to see the waveform that's being heard, well, you'll see it soon enough. But the way you determine that is in the wave page. When you have it on fixed value, or any of these, vertical grid, or X tilt, in the synth page, this will show you exactly what the waveforms are, uh, and you'll be guaranteed that there's no FM or wave sync involved in the sound. It's the pure wave.